The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is my favorite new foldable phone and it's all about the way it looks and feels. It looks like a normal phone, it feels thin and not bulky and it's incredibly fun, whether I keep it open or closed. The AI features are powerful, maybe even too powerful and the huge inner screen is the best canvas for the Pixel Studio image generator or the reimagine photo editing. It falls short of the flat Pixel 9 Pro in many ways but it makes up the difference when you open up the tablet hidden in your phone. The Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold costs $1799 US dollar and I wouldn't expect the price to drop precipitously the way the price of the original Pixel Fold did. That phone was a disappointment and Google was motivated to sell it cheaper. You can no longer buy the Pixel Fold which is highly unusual these days. The old phone generally sticks around to be the cheaper model but the Pixel Fold is gone and good riddance. Google's new foldables feels so much more advanced than its last one that I can't imagine its price will come down quickly. The materials feel very premium. This is the thinnest foldable you can buy in the US at least and thin doesn't come cheap. Neither does durability and Google says this phone is much more durable than before. It looks and feels exponentially nicer than the last Pixel Fold. Still, is $1799 US dollar too much? Like I said, if Apple made this phone, there would be no question that people would buy it. I have seen a lot of folks comparing the Google Pixel 9 to Apple's phones, saying it's the most fun and refined Android design to compete with the Dynamic Island iPhone. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is one of the nicest looking foldable phones I have seen with the best combination of hardware and software and no disappointments hidden in crevices. If you bought a Google Pixel 9 for $1799 US dollar and an iPad mini 2021 for $499 US dollar and the only thing you would lose is the ability to keep both in your pocket at the same time. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold might be the best foldable phone I have used. It's definitely the best design. I am still not sure it justifies the high price. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is a weird huge push of premium and basic parts. It has Google's latest Tensor G4 chipset paired with a hooping 16GB of RAM premium like the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. The outer display too is basic as the Pixel 9 and it can't match the brightness or the LTPO versatility of the Pixel 9 Pro's panel. The inner display is top-notch. It uses LTPO tech for a variable refresh rate of 1 to 120 Hz and it can hit brightness levels up to 2700 nits but it isn't the sharpest display around. The OnePlus Open gives you more pixels per inch and it has a large bezel by today's standards. The cameras offer some impressive specs like 5x optical zoom lens that makes a big difference whether you are shooting photos or recording video. Unfortunately, it has smaller sensors with fewer megapixels than any other Pixel 9 phone. Between the Tensor G4 and all the RAM, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold chugs along nicely. The phone may be underpowered compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 6 or latest iPhone model but Google relies on its cloud and its specialized processor for so many of its AI talks that it hardly matters. So what if the Pro Fold takes a bit longer to make photo edits? It's making magic. In all seriousness, I am worried about the long-term viability of this chipset since Google is promising that the Pixel 9 Pro Fold will get Android OS updates for the next 7 years. Google is making three big claims about the Pixel 9 Pro Fold design. This is the thinnest foldable phone you can buy. The inside screen is biggest display ever packed into a phone. This is also the most durable foldable Pixel phone yet. At least one of those claims seems highly suspect. When I showed the Pixel 9 Pro Fold to iPhone toting friends and family, they were all amazed without fail. It's the first foldable that looks normal, they all said how normal. It isn't just that the front is the exact same size and shape as Pixel 9. Being thin helps a lot. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is so thin that it's less bulky than my iPhone 15 Pro Max if I keep the iPhone in a case. On the other hand, the big cover display means the Pixel 9 Pro Fold has the biggest inner display on 
any foldable phone, even bigger than the Honor Magic V3 that I can't buy. It has a noticeable bezel, but it isn't thick or silly looking, like the pool deck surrounding the original Pixel Fold. The crease on the inner screen is still a crease, just as with every foldable phone I have seen. The crease gets less noticeable with every new foldables, but it's still there. What can you do? The Pro Fold does have the nicest hinge I have seen, with the fewest bits poking through the mechanism. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a normal cover display, it's the same display as on the Pixel 9 and sometimes being normal counts for a lot. On affordable phones, it counts every time you don't feel like opening the phone. If the cover display is weird, the phone isn't as fun to use. The Pro Fold cover display is incredibly bright and colorful and I could barely see the difference between these phones and my Pixel 9 Pro. The inner display is like a dream, it's nearly a square, so unfortunately movies don't usually feel the big screen, but videos and shows still look bigger and better inside than out, with pages are much easier to read and navigate, maps are an entirely new world of navigation, but photo editing is the star of the show. It's so much easier to edit photos on the big Pixel 9 Pro Fold in a display that I am surprised Google doesn't show every AI demonstration on its foldable. If you are questioning the fun and utility of AI tools before, seeing them on the big display makes things more clear. Whether I am chatting with Gemini, writing an email in Gmail, or adding a Volcano to my photos of Central Park, the Pro Fold is the best Google phone to use by far. In bright outdoor light, the Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold excels. I used the phone extensively for photo work in bright sunlight along with all the other major foldable phones for comparison. The Pro Fold cover display was the easiest to see at full brightness and it was the most intelligent when it came to activating the brighter screen modes. When it comes to foldable phone displays, more is better and the Pixel 9 Pro Fold gives you more screen on the outside and inside. Plus, more brightness it is the best foldable display I have used among the phones I can buy. One of the cool things about the Pixel 9 lineup is the most affordable model has the same cameras as the Pro model. The Pixel 9 has the same 50 megapixel main camera and 48 megapixel ultra wide as the Pixel 9 Pro and Pixel 9 Pro XL. Unfortunately, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold wasn't invited to the party. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold gets a much smaller camera sensor than the Pixel 9, while the Pixel 9 uses a sensor that's around 3 by 4 of an inch diagonally. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold uses a half inch sensor sensor. That's a massive step down. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 gets a sensor that's somewhere in between. This is important because sensor size is the most important factor in a smartphone camera quality. Megapixels hardly matter at all. It's the physical dimensions of the sensor that makes all the differences. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a tiny mini sensor. Here are sub camera samples of Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold.
The Pixel 9 Pro Fold makes folding phones make sense to me. It's more like a normal phone than ever but it's also not completely like using a normal phone. By opting for a phone that folds, you are still making trade-offs. Particularly in the camera hardware, the phone's long-term durability is also an unknown. Literally no one has owned a Pixel folding phone for more than a year at this point. Foldable ownership isn't for the faint of heart. But the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is the most rewarding folding phone I have ever used. Using the phone while it's closed feels way less cumbersome and much more normal than the previous Pixel Fold or a Galaxy Z Fold. That makes using the big inner screen feel that much more rewarding. I don't feel like I am putting up with a bulky phone the rest of the time to get the experience. This foldable comes with its trade-offs, the downgraded camera hardware, durability concerns, and oh yeah, the 1800 US dollar it costs. But I think Google made the right trade-offs here to optimize the inner screen experience. It's an experience that I'll miss when I switch back to the next slab style phone that I test on that foldable fans and foldable curious will find very rewarding too because goddamn. This is a nice phone.